Hey there, honey bunnies. Welcome to episode 79 of your Sovereign Storytellers podcast with your host, Michelle Wolf. Today, let's talk about becoming a shapeshifter, like an identity shapeshifter. So this is a message from Team Invisible that came through this morning I'm sharing with you. So I'm just going to dive right in as usual. There's no particular structure or <laughs> there's no um, rhyme or reason. Um, but if you're new, please uh, check out my website, thatmichellewolf.com. I have a couple of things coming up. I have an off book. It's like an off menu item, which is uh, Reclaiming the Temple. Um, it's basically finding, reclaiming the temple, reclaiming your body as a the most important part of your being. We have placed our emphasis on all the things that don't matter and we have hated on and abused and allowed the culture to make us feel certain ways about our body and that's inhibiting our manifesting ability because if we're not in our body we ain't manifesting not the way that we want to and not in sustainable ways like you can force things to happen but you'll have to force yourself to keep them too so if you're interested in that you can go to my website and book a discovery call and we can talk about it the other thing coming up is from Wounded to Wise, and that's on the website, which you can read about. It starts at the end of June, and if you're interested, I have a three-hour event that Heather Westmoreland and I did um, a couple of weeks ago that gives you a sample of it. There's two guided processes on there, and you get to hear some live coaching so you can see how I do things. All right, let's get to this message of shape-shifting. So today I was, um, actually Sunday is usually the day I avoid technology at all costs, and I've slipped on that a couple of weeks, uh, <laughs> let's be honest, probably about the last four Sundays <clears throat> I have snuck on to Twitter, and I feel the difference because I had several Sundays before that where I didn't go on social media, so I'm back to that, but this message came through strongly. And I don't have to get on Facebook to share it. So I was meditating this morning on the Mary energy, the goddess energy, exploring that and asking for where else can I soften? Where else can I love my body more? Because doing the work, if you're an online entrepreneur, especially if you're offering a service, it requires of you to change and they don't tell you that like hey start a business it'll be fun <laughs> but whoever your target market that's you honey bunny so you're gonna have to work as well we don't get to um, keep ourselves separate from the process you have to dive into the process if you want to be as effective as possible so I'm always asking that where can my heart soften more where can my intuitive channels increase how can I hear the divine more clearly? I'm asking those questions on a daily basis. So today I was thinking about the Mary energy. I've been, I just finished The Way of the Rose, excellent book, um, contemplating the rosary, the history of it, um, the history of goddess religions. The first formal religion class I took was in college way back in 1990, 1990. And um, I didn't go back to college until I was 29 years old. So, nope, that's not true. I think I was 25 years old. I graduated when I was 29. Anyway, the sociology of religion was one of the best classes I ever took. And that's when I first got exposed to the history of goddess religion. So visiting that this morning, talking to my team invisible, just really being open to whatever wanted to come through. And what I was looking at is the traditional rosary, the Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, that standard one. My 21st century sensibilities <laughs> as a feminist um, don't love all the words in there. I don't love thinking, I don't love the word sinners. I, I feel that there's a, a political tool, energy in that word. And I know that it 
doesn't really matter. Like I know it logically, every culture has some kind of chant or something and the words don't matter. Chanting numbers don't matter. Chanting particular words don't matter. The The thing is to give your, um, your uh, border collie brain something to fixate on so the rest of you can do the real work. <laughs> so it's like giving a toddler a cookie to play with while you're trying to get, you know, your housework done or, or write a book or something. So I was thinking about that and I heard the grandmothers, there's a grandmother's energy here in my region and they said the same. It doesn't matter. The words don't matter. Uh, pull out the words you don't like. Put in the words you do like. The only thing that does matter, though, and this is, I know my friend Bettina says this a lot, that when you have a string of words or phrases that have been said for thousands of years, hundreds of years, whatever, I don't know when the current form of the the rosary prayer happened but anyway we can assume that that phrase has been said billions of times that creates an energy an energy it embeds a series of words with an energy but energy is a neutral tool so you can use it for your own healing you can use it to help heal others you can use it for evil you can use it for good Money's a neutral tool. Hammers are a neutral tool. The other day I focused, uh, uh, posted on Facebook that, you know, hammers are used to commit murders all the time. But we don't get mad at hammers. We don't refuse to have hammers. We don't say you can't be spiritual and have a bag of hammers. <clears throat> but we do that with money, right? Money gets used for evil and all of a sudden we can't have it and be spiritual and we need to push against it and we need to hate it and all that stuff. But a hammer and a dollar bill, a hundred dollar bill is the same damn thing. It's a manifested tool and we get to do with it what we want. Same with ancient prayers. Doesn't matter what the word is. There's an energetic portal there that we can step into and connect to just like streams in the river, right? Different temperatures in the river. We can be in the warm part of the river or the cooler part of the river. We can be in the calm water or the white water. Bottom line, we get to decide to do with these energies what we want. That's our sovereignty. We get bogged down when we limit what is our natural fluid solid way of being so just looking at my notes um a soft receptive heart is what's required now right out in front of my house or on the side depending on <laughs> yeah i think it's on it would be technically on the side there's a creek that runs and it's pretty full right now and so often i will just sit and contemplate the creek because flowing water helps me loosen my energy. I imagine that the energy is flowing through me. Um, I don't shield or block energies. I pull them through because to me that feels more powerful. And I know that that way does not work for everybody. But I came to that from the Buddhist um, Tonglen practice, T-O-N-G-L-E-N, -E where you breathe stuff in and you transform it and exhale it as light. I know that that is a challenge in the beginning but for now right now pulling energy through makes more sense to me it's more efficient and I love efficiency <laughs> so I'm watching that and then I was I heard the word um, shape-shifting and fluidity so when we are just like I said in the beginning when we are offering a course and it is to help women get in their body then the minute that idea comes through, we are asked to start changing. We might actually experience what the clients who are coming to us in the future are experiencing today. That's why it's important to ask, is this energy mine or someone else's? Is it a future client's energy that I'm getting a feel of so I'll know best how to help him, her, or they when they show up? So in this fluidity, in contemplating all the things, money, the current state of affairs, 
I wonder what's coming through. I wonder what's going to adapt and change. Um, our world is changing rapidly, moment to moment. Yeah, we're all aware of that. So what I heard was I got a download of information and the, do my best here to describe it. Um, we are malleable. Our body is malleable. Our body responds to our thoughts. And here's a real practical example. You know people who are suffering. Their face looks a certain way. When that suffering lifts, their faces change. I have a woman going through Wounded to Wise right now who's fortunately, um, she does several live streams so we can go back to the beginning and say, look at your face. Then, a few months ago, we started in January, and now look at your face now. And you can physically see the difference that her thoughts and her uh, her willingness to process her pain now and all these things, all the diligent work she's done, you can see it on her face. Okay, her countenance has changed dramatically. We know that our bodies are influenced just like that. What we're thinking shows on our face. The eyes are the mirror to the soul. We know by someone's facial expression, we know that from scientific studies that we have micro expressions that you can see on politicians and leaders where they can freeze frame and show you the micro expression that tells the truth, right? The body never lies. Even when you're trying to control your face, your micro expressions are registered in the subconscious of everyone watching you. And that's why somebody can present as a certain thing, like let's say they present as a great leader and other people are like, yeah, the words sound good, but something feels off. The something that feels off is you being aware of the body shifting and changing, shape shifting, based on what that person is thinking. And when they tell a lie, or when they're telling sort of the truth, but they're holding some stuff back. Okay, if you have real sharp intuition, you're going to feel that. And even for people who don't have real sharp intuition, they can, they'll usually say, um, something's just not quite right. You know, they might still go forward and vote for that person. But deep down, they know that something's not quite right. They're not seeing the whole story. Okay. When we so I'll just share everything that came and you take it and run with it or stop the recording and never come back. I don't care. <laughs> so what I was seeing is a time when I don't know when or where, but we were the human being was able to shape shift to form what they wanted to create. You want to create a baby? You shape shift into baby energy. You flood your system with parent energy, baby energy. You want to create more resources. You flood your system with the energy of abundance and prosperity and more than enough. And you stay in that. You hold the shape and you let it fill with energy until it's manifest. So this is a potter making a cup and then allowing the cup to fill itself. Our bodies are like vessels of receiving and it is twisted and uncomfortable and a struggle when we will not let our body shift into the energetic form that we're trying to experience in tangible 3D reality. We were never meant to remain static. If you follow Joe Dispenza, this has some connection there. Like we were meant to shift our identity as we needed it to shift to have different experiences. We have been raised with the concept that who you are is who you are. I am what I am. 
if you've ever watched the Popeye cartoon, and if you never have, I don't know if you want to waste your time. I didn't think it was that great, but <laughs> we were meant to be shapeshiftery, fluid, flowing. If you want to create a pink flamingo, you saturate yourself in the energy of pink flamingos. If you want to create a million dollars, you have to allow your body to shift at a cellular level to hold the energy of a million dollars. If you want more on that, you can check out Corey Michelle receiving millions being you. If you want to be a powerful healer, helper, space holder, facilitator, whatever word you want to put on that when you work with people and help them transform, then you have to be willing to transform. You have to be willing to shapeshift. You have to be willing to let your identity be whatever it is for the day. Several people had the identity of service worker, and now they're unemployed. There's shock and panic in that. And most of those, that industry doesn't have a lot of savings accounts, a lot in their savings account. Coaches, um, you know, we don't either in general, just broadly speaking. We haven't allowed ourselves to shape shift into what is next. Now, this is a process and you have to do the grieving first. Grieving the loss of your identity is critical, critical to stepping into the new one. And there's different thoughts out there that you can just step away from the old identity and step into the new one. And some people can. I believe that's true. For the people who can't, there needs to be a funeral, a death, a deathing, <laughs> a dying, an acknowledgement of yourself as I used to be a hairdresser and now I'm a, I don't know, let me get with my body. Let me feel for the energy. Let me sit in silence and feel. Feel the energy that's trying to come through me the same way you would sit in the creek and feel the water flowing around you. If you're in the shallow section, it's warm. You go down to the uh, fishing hole, it's deep and cooler. It's a variety. We are living a buffet of options and we're stuck on the fruit salad. We're not seeing that there is rows and rows and rows of other foods available. There is a kaleidoscope of energy streams available to us and we're not picking them because we are trying to be static when we're meant to be fluid. We fight everything about our physical body. We fight its desires. We fight its rhythms. We are disconnected from the seasons. Part of the one-on-one -on -one reclaiming your temple private experience people have with me, we're, we're going to be talking about that. Creating a seasonal altar. Feeling into the energy of your home. Linking to the land beneath your home. Getting in touch with the rise and fall, the normal life, death, rebirth cycle that we fight. We fight our aging. We scramble for, I'm watching my daughter who, you know, years ago started buying anti-aging cream. <laughs> I was like, you don't have a single wrinkle on your face. <laughs> and she's like, well, I have lines. Yeah, okay. You don't need anti-aging cream. You're not 60. But that's what happens, right? Oh, we need to buy this and we need to buy that. And we need to do everything we can to hold menopause at bay. Good Lord, don't get me started on that one. Take the hormones, take the pills, take slap a patch on your butt. Do everything you can to avoid aging. But that is a season and a rhythm and a requirement of being physical. 
When we disconnected from the land and started to force our will on the land, we will grow crops. And when the land stops producing, we won't let it rest. We'll add more chemicals. We'll add more this and that. We'll force it to grow. We disconnected ourselves and the fight has continued. And now that the rug has been yanked out from under us, we don't remember how to sink into the rhythms of the earth, how to reconnect to our body and understand that our body is the antenna. Our body is the receiver. Our body is the cell phone that receives the signal that's being broadcast. And if you're not connected to your cell phone, you can't do anything. It really, these days, you can't do anything, right? You lose your cell phone, you're fucked. <laughs> can't get to the bank, can't talk to anybody. Nobody remembers phone numbers anymore. You know, but cell phones are useless to us if they can't pick up the signal. And we have lost our connection to the signal of the divine. Of this planet and its rhythms. Of our own body's rhythmic responses. Inhale, exhale. Have a lot of money, have just enough or not enough. We keep trying to grab on and become static. Oh, I have enough money right now. Let me grip on. Let me hold on. Let me hoard. Let me buy all the toilet paper. Okay, that's the mind gone. That's an insane mind. We are insane in the membrane, and we are grippy and graspy and desperate and terrified, and we get to choose to let go. If we don't let go, we become bitter and brittle husks of who we could be. We age faster. We look terrible. Our faces are pinched and closed. I've gone into the grocery store twice, and I don't think I'll do it again unless I just have to run in for some fresh food. Because the pinched and painful faces... A, a woman and I were doing that aisle dance, you know, where... <laughs> You're trying to go around each other, but you keep going in the same direction. And I laughed and her, she looked at me and then she smiled and started laughing too. And it's like we were both so tense. It's like her whole face changed when she was like, oh, we can still laugh. And I know mine did too. Locked. We're locked in place and we need to be fluid. We're living a shadow, a pale, weak shadow of what our experience could be. Think about a dried up old gnarly peach versus a full, luscious summer peach. How appealing that is when you, it's a hot summer day and the, or late in the summer and the new peaches come out. Or you go, if you are lucky enough to live near an orchard where you can go to the peaches or the apples or whatever and how beautiful and vibrant and alive they are. That's what we're supposed to be. But fruits are changing all the time too. They're growing, they're ripening, they're dying. We have to embrace change. We have to embrace the impermanence. We know that. We have left ourselves that information for thousands and thousands of years. We know it's always changing, but modern culture has really embedded at us, embedded in us. Don't ever change. Whatever you do, don't change. And the message is, you better start changing. You better unpeel your hands off the steering wheel. Because <laughs> how you used to drive is not going to work now. Who you used to be is no more. We are not going back to where we were. So we need to, as soon as you can, I'm not telling you how to feel. When you can, do your grieving that that was then and this is now and what is now asking of me. Stay in the grief as long as you need to. Acknowledge it. Feel it. 
if you really acknowledge and feel it, it moves through pretty quickly. And then you start to look toward life again. The you who was in February no longer exists. And the you who is growing and becoming what will be in May needs your attention. So the recommendation is to revisit concepts of impermanence, to really get a grip on your terrified mind and comfort it. Take control of that and remind it, yes, things are dying. Our culture is terrified of death. Let me revisit this and get comfortable with the idea that I'm always changing. Let me get comfortable with uncertainty. Pema Children has a wonderful book on that called Comfortable with Uncertainty. It's a brilliant book. Let me go outside and watch as spring is coming or winter is coming, depending on where you are in the world. Let me go out and put my hands on the ground and sense into the heartbeat of the land I'm on. Let me ask it if it has a message for how I can be a shapeshifter, for how I can let go of my fixed identity and my frantic efforts to keep things in place that need to die, that need to be swept away. The image I had, a I don't know when, not long ago, of dishes being swept off the table, just clean slate, blank slate. Sweep it off the table, let it go, and let your body shape shift into the energy of what's to come. It needs to. The discomfort is dragged on longer when we try to swim upstream. When we try to hold spring back, can you imagine trying to hold spring back? Like deciding you don't like spring because you have allergies, so you're just going to fight it. We're just not going to have spring. We're canceling spring. We're canceling Christmas. We're just not going to have the seasons anymore. Well, good luck to you. You know you can't cancel spring. You wouldn't even try. In the same way, you can't cancel you transforming and shape-shifting into an energy that will then become the form of what's trying to be born through you, male or female. There is newness trying to be born through you, stop fighting it. Meditate on running water. I can't emphasize this enough. Get outside. Even if you only have a plant, put your hands around a plant and ask it to be your teacher. Some of you know that I'm Um, following the path toward druidry through um, (laughs) OBOD, Organization of Bards or Ovates and Druids. I'm in the Ovate stage, which is heavily plant-based, which I already was, but this is like a more formal study. Even if you think you don't have intuition and a plant could never offer you anything, humble yourself enough to go ask, to go sit by a tree and ask, I don't know what to do. Everything is changing so quickly. Can you show me? I appreciate the oxygen that you've given me my whole life. Let me acknowledge that and ask you, is there some wisdom that could help me Learn to shift and flow with these rapidly changing waters. Is there something that I can do to relax into my body, to disconnect from the collective trauma, or to let it just flow through me, knowing that energy is energy is energy? 
for my patrons, the people who support me on Patreon, they get a uh, daily, six days a week, one command process or a little meditation or something around money. Yesterday I reminded them that energy is just energy is just energy. I feel like I just need to pair it and just put that on endless loop. Energy is energy. Energy is energy. Now give me a cracker. Give the cracker a cracker. <laughs> energy is just energy. And there's an enormous amount of energy that's been released into the atmosphere, so to speak. You can ride that energetic wave. You can tap into that increased energy and shape shift your new reality today by choosing to let your old identity go. Let the old ways you would describe yourself dissolve. Who do I want to be now? Make a list. On the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Michelle Wolf 11. I would love to see you there. It's an inexpensive way to work with me six days a week. But make a list. Who am I on the left side? I'm a mom. I'm a coach. I'm a mechanic. I'm a truck driver. I like pizza. You know, write down everything that you know about yourself. And ask yourself, where did you pick that up? Why do you like pizza? Because everybody around you celebrated with pizza? Why do you like certain things? Why do you like certain styles of clothing? Do you like them because you really like them? Have you ever explored that? Do you enjoy flannels and cowboy boots because that's what you love or that's what your dad wore? When you start to ask those questions, you can get a lot of information and then you can decide, who do I want to be going forward? Maybe I still wear flannel shirts and cowboy boots, but uh, the energy is completely different. It's no longer allegiance to the past. It's clothes I really do like and I wear them going forward with freedom. I hope this is making sense. Becoming fluid in your identity, shape-shifting your identity is extremely power, that powerful. That's the message. That's the way to surf these waves. That's the way to dive into these wild energies and leverage them so that you can do more good in the world. If you're on the leading edge and you figure out that you can just drop all your mental constructs, dive into these energies and let yourself transform into what your soul knows you can be, you're unstoppable. And you're a, a light shining in the darkness for the other people who are trying to do the same, who really need to do the same or they're not going to make it. If you try to keep a flower from blooming, it dies. It becomes distorted and twisted and fails. We have been given a blank slate. Somebody came along and swept all the dishes off the table and your computer and all your books. What do you want now? You've got a free pass. You can choose to be whatever energy you want to be right now. And if your mind is like, yeah, but... That's okay. That's what minds do. They're designed to keep you fixed. But they're not designed to make decisions and they were never meant to be the only voice you listen to. They were meant to be a voice in the chorus of voices that is you. There's a time and a place for our logical mind. We need it to balance our checkbooks. <laughs> We need it to read a map. We don't need it to decide who we are and who we're going to be and who we're becoming. Your heart knows that. Your body knows that. And they're demanding, crying out for your attention. And the faster you stop, drop into stillness and listen, the easier your transformation can be, will 
be. I 100% believe that. You learn faster when you're relaxed. Life is easier when you're rolling with it rather than resisting it and fighting it and asking, when am I going to get to go back to work? When can I go back to the office? When are these dang kids going back to school? I don't know. Nobody does. So how about what kind of work do I want to do now? How can I have the feeling of working while I'm sitting on my living room floor Instead of at a desk in a chair, which we were all indoctrinated in from kindergarten or first grade. Did we still sit on? I feel like we sat on the floor a lot in kindergarten. But by first grade, you're busting a desk. And you're in trouble if you try and get out of it. Let's go back. Shred that up. Thank you for the training. And now what do we want to do next? Ask your body. If you hate your body, if you think your body has to be a certain way so that you can be a certain way, I'm just here to tell you, you've got it ass backwards. You need to get with your body and make your body your best fucking friend. Because it's got the wisdom. In human design, the focus is on the body. The body is the leader here, not the mind. The mind doesn't know what the hell it's doing obviously. And that's okay. It's not supposed to know. It's like asking a five-year-old to manage your investment portfolio. That five-year-old doesn't know what the hell it's doing. Your mind doesn't know how to handle rapidly changing whitewater level category four river energies. I might have that category wrong. (laughs) Don't hold me to the details, please. The loudest cry that I've heard for the last few years is from the trees. Connect to the trees and dig into the roots so that you can stay safe, energetically safe, grounded and held and supported and loved and comforted, making friends with your body. shape-shifting into these energies instead of fighting and trying to be rigid against them. Drop all resistance. I'm probably sounding by like a broken record these days, but I don't care. It matters that much. Flow, shift, reframe, knock everything off the table, have a good cry, hold a funeral for all the broken things. And then dry your eyes and stand up and say, what's next? Show me the way I'm willing. Show me the way to shift my identity. I'm willing to be now the person, the human being, and let the form fill in all around you. Stop trying to make the form change. Change yourself, and the form will change, guaranteed. All right, that's all I have for you today. What I do have is a number of different ways I can help you get into your body. The I have a $49 offer called the Animal Avatar Journey. It's on the website, thatmichellewolf.com. Animal Avatar is right there at the top. It's 49 bucks, And in an hour, you can have a powerful tool to start to reconnect to your body's wisdom. The next level up is a human design foundations reading. That's 175. And in an hour, you will have the blueprint. You will know the path to take to get in your body and start to reverse the the backwards way we've been trying to live. Because that's all we know. That's what we were taught. We weren't. We just we just didn't know, okay? But there's ways for you to know. To so to flounder and suffer, don't do that anymore. You're not helping anybody by trying to stay the same. You're definitely not helping yourself. Then I have the off book one on one reclaiming your temple. You can book a fifteen minute appointment. We can talk about that. That one's fifteen hundred dollars and it is intense. 
intense. If you want to go even deeper and really jump into the white water and learn to float and transform, you want to come into From Wounded to Wise starting at the end of June. Because times have changed, I'm letting people start their payment plans now so that they can be a little smaller and a little more manageable. That's on the website too. And again, if you want that three-hour sampler evening, just send me a message, info at thatmichellewolf.com, and I'll send you the link. And that, from Wounded to Wise, is uh, got early bird pricing right now of 3500 till the middle of May, and then it goes up to 5000 so there's all the, there's a range, right? There's all this free stuff you can have. Then there's a forty nine dollar all the way up to thirty five hundred or five thousand. You pick. You let your body tell you which one you're ready for. When we are malleable, we change our outcomes. When we let go of our fear. We shift and flow and we manifest what's more true, what's true for us now. Hang out with these contemplations. See what you think. Nah, see what you feel. Right? See what you feel. Think less. Feel more. I'll be back to talk to you again later.